Well, there is talk of a New York City mayor running for president. We're not talking about Rudy Giuliani. Instead, Mike Bloomberg, the self-made billionaire, has not declared his candidacy, but you would know it based on the buzz. And Trenalona of the director is the director of foreign policy and international women's issues at the Independent Women's Forum. And Mark Walsh is a Democratic strategist and co-host of Left Jab on XM Satellite Radio. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. All right, and so the buzz really hit a, a fever pitch, so to speak, when Bloomberg and GOP Senator Chuck Hagel met for dinner in Washington, D.C. Then we kind of heard the rumors that he might run as an independent. Clearly, he has the money to do it. Do you think he'll actually make a, make a go of it, though? Well, I think the question is now, if he's looking to prove that he's a fiscal conservative, a stake at the palm is much cheaper than a presidential campaign, so he's doing a good job there. Uh, but the big question is, it's a very crowded race with the Republicans on in, the, in this race. And the thing is, people still want somebody else. The question is, there's a lot of drama as to whether he'll be an independent. And I think most people want new leadership do they necessarily want a third party run? I'm not so sure about right. that. And, and clearly when Ross Perot did it, many people thought he took away votes uh, from uh, the Republican in the race. But Mark, let's take a look at Bloomberg's politics. He's anti-gun, he's pro-choice, uh, but he's also pro-big business. So who would he lure the votes away from? Well, what he really cares about right today, Amy, is whether his alma mater, Johns Hopkins, wins the U.S. National Lacrosse Championship. And he's a big Johns Hopkins guy. So that's number one for him today. But yes, I think his policies are extremely centrist. I think a lot of American voters are going to start to take a look at Michael Bloomberg because of his centrist policies. As you mentioned, there's a lot of dissatisfaction on both sides of the aisle. This man has what everyone wants, and that's the money to make a late run. Remember, all these primaries are front-loaded now. So there's a whole lot of time between having them chosen and the actual convention. And I think the American, uh, the American voter may say, I want a different choice. And that's when Bloomberg will step up. Yeah, Ann, and here's a weird one. If Bloomberg runs, we would have two New York City mayors facing off in a presidential race. Say Hillary Clinton's the Democratic candidate. I mean, you've got all three from New York. Who wins New York? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. Uh, how do you think that, that, that they would fare, though, having roots all really from the same area, at least recent roots? I think the difference between the people who support Hillary Clinton and who are her strong backers and the people who really support both Bloomberg and Giuliani um, across the nation are vastly different. So I, I think even from the polls you can tell people are split straight down the middle. So you've got 50 percent one way and 50 percent the other way and it's all about voter turnout. Yeah, Mark, how do you think a third party candidate would fare this time around? I mean, could an independent reasonably actually win the White House? I think there is absolutely no question that there's never been a better time in American politics in the last 50 to 100 years for a third party candidate with the kind of resources that a Bloomberg or some of the others that we may, that we may talk about to give it a shot. Especially, remember who Bloomberg may choose as a, as a running mate. There was talk about uh, Chuck Hagel and Mike Bloomberg teaming up. So a, a good combo team with a centrist attitude and a lot of money behind them, I believe, yes, they could win the national election. Very interesting. Uh, Mark Walsh and Trent alone, thanks so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you.